I'm now going to demonstrate giving an IV piggyback medication and the patient has a running IV. The patient has an IV of 1,000 half normal saline with 20 millicoulins of KCL and the order for the IV piggyback is for the patient to get ampicillin 500 milligrams. Um, I check my, I'm at the Pixis or in the uh, medication room and I've pulled out my ampicillin and I'm checking that uh, ampicillin 500 milligrams for crisscross matches the MAR and checking the allergies, especially important with um, antibiotics and the patient has no known allergies. So I've got that um, uh, ready to go and now I'm going to gather my other supplies. I need some alcohol swabs, I need some clean gloves which I'll probably get in the room um, and I also need a secondary uh, tubing, a piggyback tubing and I can get that in the in the supply room or in the medication room, wherever it, it might be, um, but I want to make sure that it's a se it says secondary on it. So I'm going to do one more check in the Pixis or the medication room that I have the correct drug, which is ampicillin 500 milligrams. I also have looked up the drug on in the dr reference book, drug reference book, and just found out that uh, uh, ampicillin can be given over 20 to 30 minutes, so to make my calculation easier, I'm going to give it over 30 minutes. Um, and also I need to check to see if it's compatible with the IV that's running, and it is compatible. So I want to do my calculation for how fast I'm going to run the antibiotic. It's 100 milliliters over half an hour, so I need to do some IV calculation. So it's 100 milliliters, and the drop factor on the secondary tubing is 10, so that's times 10. And we're, we're going to be giving this over 30 minutes. So we're divided by 30, and we get 33 drops per minute. So I'm going to be giving it at 33 drops per minute, or about 8 drops every 15 seconds. Now, if the patient had an IV pump, then um, if I'm going to give this over a half an hour on an IV pump, I would need to set the pump rate actually at 200 milliliters an hour uh, because pumps are set at an hourly rate, and then in one half hour, the 100 milliliters is going to be gone. So whether I'm giving it by pump or by gravity will, will change uh, how I'm going to do my math. So now I'm going to, ready to go into the patient's room. I've got my uh, IV antibiotic, I've got my secondary tubing, I've got some alcohol swabs, and I've got my MAR. Um, I come into the room and set my supplies down. The first thing I want to do is wash my hands, identify myself to the patient, and then I want to do um, two identifiers with the patient and the MAR. I see this is crisscross. Uh, ID is 8-7-19-25. And I ask the patient if he has any allergies, and he doesn't. And I check for allergies again on the MAR. I'm going to put on some clean gloves. And... I'm going to prepare my tubing, prime my tubing, and I'm going to use the primary bag to help me do that. First thing I do when I open the, up the tubing is to close the roller clamp. So I'm going to put the roller clamp up to the top and close it, because I don't want to spike the bag and then lose half my medication before I've got that roller clamp closed. And now I'm going to spike the bag, keeping the tip sterile. And then I want to fill my drip chamber half full. And I'm going to hang this on the second hook here. And what I'm going to do is back prime my um, secondary uh, uh, tubing. I've assessed the IV site, make sure that it's patent, there's no um, infiltration or phlebitis. And I clean off the port, because when you're giving IV piggyback, you want to go to the port closest to the bag, whereas IV push is the port closest to the IV site. So I'm going to clean with alcohol. This is a lower lock, so I'm just going to screw that in. 
And now this whole tubing here has got air in it. So what I want to do is prime that tubing. So we can do what you call back prime. That You can also flush between antibiotics the same way. It's called back flushing. I'm going to take the bag and I'm going to hold it down below the primary bag and open it up full. And if, if, you, you can, if you can see this, the, it's going at full force here. Because basically what I've created is just one IV line there. So I've flushed the tubing, closed off the clamp again, and put it back up here. And now I can set my rate as soon as I lower the primary bag. That's why you have a hook in your secondary tubing um, container. Because you want to hang the, the primary bag is going to hang lower so that this will run. Now once this secondary bag is empty to about here, um, because of gravity, then the primary bag is going to start flowing. So I'm going to open this completely, because I'm not going to regulate my, my uh, IV drip rate with this. I'm going to regulate it with my primary tubing. I'm going to open this up. And then I'm going to set my rate at about 8 drops every 15 seconds. So in, that's 33, 32 drops a minute. Uh, so once a half an hour has gone by, I come in and I assess that the IV is, is empty. Um, and once the secondary is empty, I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to raise my secondary, my primary, I'm sorry, primary bag. And then I want to reset the rate to what the primary setting is. Say this is 100 milliliters an hour, then I'm going to have to set that back to 16 drops a minute, where it was running at 33 drops per minute. Okay, this concludes giving, uh, administrating IV piggyback medication through a running IV.